This Catholic high school, keep that in mind. And then across the street from my high school, oh no, this is on camera, right? <laughs> across from my high school, there was an all-girls Catholic high school, and they had a dance. And this was my eighth grade, right? Eighth grade year, and then Chi like laughing. He's like, oh, Chi Sen's gonna look like an idiot right now, right? <laughs> so, I, we, had, we had the dance in the basketball gym, right? Mm -hmm. Where the basketball court is, we have these oh. huge basketball courts, right? Um, college size, right? And then we have what are called the rafters, right? So the stairs. And all the girls are shy and all the guys are shy too, but they express it in different ways. All the guys are in the middle of the dance floor, right? Trying to act like they're cool, but they're not doing anything, <laughs> right? And then all the girls are way in the back, right? And it was my brilliant idea that I was like, there was this one girl I liked, right? She was like the only Asian girl in the school, right? Her name, I still remember, was Christine Sakai, right? And she's way up there and somehow, I managed to get the cajones, right? I'm not gonna translate that. Cajones, you can pretend what that is, right? I managed to get the cajones, right? The guts, right? The guts to ask her to dance with me, all right? And this is what I did. I went to the very bottom of the bleachers, right? She's like 100 feet away at least, right? Way back there, and I'm like, hey! Hey! The music is like blasting, she can barely hear me. She's like, what, right, what? Will you dance with me? She's like... <laughs> I was petrified. I was mortified. And after that, I couldn't find the guts to ask a girl out until, right? Until my third year in graduate school. So from middle school all the way up until my third year in graduate school. I could not get the courage to ask a girl to do anything with me, right? You guys are like poor Jimmy and Sim, right? Why am I sh sharing this story with you? Naturally, right, I was very shy, right? Not just from that experience, but overall, I'm Asian American. I'm Korean American in a school primarily filled with Latinos, right? Caucasian Americans, right? And I don't like sports. My school was primarily an athletic school. So most of the football stars were the ones who were getting all the focus, right? And here I was, right? One, more studious, right? But two, seemingly from an entirely different world. There were maybe two or three Asian people in our whole class of 93 people. How about right? Korean American? Korean American, there was one other Korean American, right? In my grade. Okay? Um, now, that all changed. It came with practice. At first, I was nervous too. At first, I was going up there and I, was, I didn't know what to do, right? Um, I was very tight, right? I didn't know how to improvise. I felt like I had to be at the podium. I felt like I had to have the notes. I felt like I had to practice. And that is necessary as well, too. You do have to practice at first. And that's what the chapter begins with. It says, don't, right? Don't have this misunderstanding that people are natural born speakers. Some people are, but a lot of people, for example, the most successful speakers on TED, they spent hundreds of hours on one presentation, right? And that's not including all the help they got from other people. Some of the people that they described say that um, they got feedback, right? They would tape themselves first and deliver practice runs, and then they would send this to their colleagues. They would send this to different people as well, too. One of the most successful people, when she was delivering a message on um, compassion, she sent it to a yoga instructor, a teacher, right? Her family. She got different perspectives. Because think about it, your audience is going to come from a very wide range of backgrounds, right? So the first part, practice, get feedback, right? You're gonna look stupid, it's okay. You won't look as stupid as me when I was asking Christine to dance with me. Okay, I guarantee you, you will not look as stupid as that, right? So it's okay to feel uncomfortable, you'll get better at it. Now, as they talked about this, they started going into body language, right? And also, what makes people successful in terms of vocalization as well, too. Okay, so in terms of specific body language, all right? First one I want to talk about is, um, well, before body language, let's talk about speaking. Four things they talk about. One, rate. What does rate mean in physics? Rate. Uh, rate, not the rate. The rate is like... How much something happens per time, hmm. right? how much something happens per occasion or per time, right? So the rate, the speed at which you speak, literally there is words per minute, right? There's that to consider. Two, volume. How loud are you? 
How softly do you speak, right? Do you speak louder at certain moments, right? At which moments is it more appropriate to speak loudly? At which moments do you bring it down so people have to make more of an effort to hear you speak, right? There's, depending on the volume, right? It can be very effective, right? Getting people to listen, okay? Three, pitch, high or low inflections, right? I know I tend to have a deep voice, so it's very hard for me to talk. Like, it's hard for me to talk with a high pitch, right? But sometimes when you get excited, I noticed that they were filming me yesterday, and there was a moment where I got really excited, and all of a sudden I sounded like a little girl, right? <laughs> if you can master that as well, too, right? It's great. Pauses, right? This is incredibly, incredibly effective if you use it correctly, right? If you come across a key word or a key moment in your speech, right, and there's something you want to emphasize, people are uncomfortable with pauses, actually. I don't know if you know this, but we're talking all the time, we're listening all the time. We feel like, especially today, we always have something to do, right? So once a speaker is engaged with you, and then all of a sudden, right, they share something profound or something important with you, and then they just stop, and they just look at you. Just like this moment. Just like this moment, right? <laughs> I 